All right, we'll get a hack in three, two, one, hack. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to FAM 4105, time now 12.30. I'm safe. I'm safe. Mission objective for today is to ex plan and execute a basic familiarization flight, with training objectives being to familiarize the naval flight student with aircraft systems, emergency procedures, and normal operating procedures, demonstrate ability to effectively operate as a crew member in the jet aircraft environment, demonstrate airways navigation knowledge, ability, and proficiency, with our plan for today being to take off out of home field as a single, flying over to the Pensacola MOA to execute the squirrel cage and landing attitude stall, coming out of the MOA to head over to Mobile Regional to shoot one approach there, and then recovering back home via course rules. For the product review in front of you, we have our admin uh, information on the top left side of the Meepward card with our timeline, comms flow, and sequences for today, as well as our conduct up in the MOA under that notes section. We also have on the bottom half of the left side all of our waypoints for today, and then on the right half we have a map of the Pensacola South MOA, as well as the geo refs we plan on inputting for today's flight. Any questions or additions for the Meepward card? No questions. Right. We also have a jet log there in front of you that outlines our fuel plan, as well as a copy of the approach we plan on shooting over at Mobile Regional, and a copy of the DD-1801 for your signature. We call sign Rocket 1-1 today. We're using the aircraft 611. You'll be in the front seat, I'll be in the back seat. We'll plan to walk at about 1330 or so for a GTS start at 1345. Plan to take off at 1400 with a 1530 land time. For the current weather outside here at home field, they're calling winds 360 at 7 with 10 statute miles viz, few at 800 and a scattered at 16,000, and then a broken layer at 25,000. Expecting for our time of flight, potential for some showers in the vicinity, as well as a scattered layer at 2,500 and broken at 7,000 and 25,000 coming back home. So those layers continuing to drop, we should be able to get course rules in. Over at Pensacola International, wind 340 at 9, 10 statute miles of viz, sky's clear and expecting that to be the trend all day today. And then for all of our divert fields, the current weather and forecast weather is going to be VFR for today, so no concerns there. For the applicable notums here at home field, the PAR minimums have been updated to 501, as well as there's the potential for 5G interference with our rat out, so be sure to keep an eye on that coming in. No bash uh, to worry about for today, it's low everywhere, and then no applicable TFRs for our route of flight. Our fuel plan for today gives us an MCF in the south mo of a 1.6. We'll plan on setting that in our bingo bug on startup, and then plan to reset a MCF 1.4, leaving Mobile Regional no lower than a 1.2, which should put us back at home field uh, with a divert fuel of 0 0.6. That'll be our div VFR divert fuel to get over to Pensacola International. On startup, once we check exceedances and overflows, we'll initially turn in ATIS and button one and pry. Once we've recorded ATIS, we'll switch over to button two and get our clearance, uh, requesting our flight plan route to Navy Pensacola. And then once we've got clearance, we'll switch over to button three and continue our on deck startup. And then uh, we'll proceed with the rest of the comms flow as uh, we proceed on our ground ops. We'll leave button 30 in aux all day today, unless we go off aux to get weather for Mobile Regional and back here at home field. In sequence one, we'll plan on inputting our assigned block for the Pensacola South MOA. Sequence two is gonna contain the Whiskey 155 and Hawk 4 areas. And then sequence three is gonna be Shelby, Shelby and DeSoto MOAs. Under GeoRefs, we'll input all our GeoRefs as mentioned on the back side of that kneeboard card, and we'll ensure to box all three sequences and GeoRefs as well. Our planned route of flight for today going to be taking off and requesting direct TZ, then direct to the MOA for a delay in 20 minutes, and then leaving the Pensacola South MOA proceeding direct to Mobia Regional with a delay for 10 minutes to shoot one approach, and then coming out of the MOA at 9,000 proceeding, coming out of Mobile, excuse me, proceeding direct to Jerry's at 9,000, direct to TZ, and then requesting course rules to come back home. For pre-flight, we'll head down to Mains together and look over the book, noticing any trends that could potentially affect us for our flight today. Uh, at that point, you'll sign for the jet prior to walking. We'll plan to walk together. I'll be conducting a thorough walk around with you monitoring my progress, ensuring I don't miss anything, and then we'll head up to the jet and get strapped in. While we're strapping in, we'll ensure all our switches are set, ensuring of note the anti-skid is on, the engine switch is on, our fuel control norm is in norm, and the eject select switch is in both. Once we're both properly strapped in with eight points, we'll initiate an ICS check. We'll report the same switch positions as mentioned. We'll then conduct a lights and tones test, and then we'll 
trigger the uh, light switch on our right side, ensuring that we check the operation of all applicable uh, light bulbs in the cockpit. At that point, we'll report good lights and tones rear and it'll respond to their current fuel state and GTS to indicate GTS startup. We'll monitor all gauges and instruments during that startup, ensuring a proper start with an inside outside scan, including monitoring the PC for any hand signals from them. The good start will report thumbs up from PC and begin setting up our instruments. As mentioned, once we get started up, we'll initially check exceedances and overflows by going to the uh, menu bit, ensure that we uh, can box maintenance there and check exceedances and overflows on the maintenance page. Then we'll go to the aircraft data page and check that we're tracking four satellites and our alignment qual is counting down. At that point, we'll report the same and go off uh, on button two to pick up our clearance for flight plan route. At that point, once we've got our clearance, we'll read that back, switch it over to button three, and begin setting up our systems on deck, including entering all applicable geo refs and setting up our ADI and HSI as required for departure. During a startup, once we are in PC checks, we'll make sure that we're hands out at that point, and it'll only be MFDs and up. There's no talking on the radio at that point. Once the IP begins to pull forward for the brakes check, we'll go ahead and trigger the rad out bit on the bit page, and then the IP. PCs will come around for their final checks. Again, we'll be hands out at that point. If we still need any time before the canopy comes down, we'll let the IP know, and we'll proceed over to Marshall from there to finish getting our equipment set up for the departure. We'll set up our AV, both the ADI and the HSI in accordance with the TAC OSOP, ensuring we're completely set up and ready to go prior to calling for taxi. Once we're completely set up and ready to go, we'll first call base on AUX and let them know that we're taxi outbound with our side number, and then we'll call ground on pry on button three, calling ground rocket one one single taxi with golf, for example. For today's taxi, we'll expect runway seven. So that would be a taxi of Foxtrot Delta Alpha cross one one nine at Alpha, hold short of seven right, as well as the current altimeter setting. Once we read back our taxi clearance, We'll go through our instrument checks, ensuring that the IP has set the appropriate squawk and altimeter setting from ground, ensuring that all four altimeters in the jet, both on the MFD and the standbys, are all within 75 feet of each other as uh, its SOP. We'll also ensure that both, lead, both the front and aft cockpits have a good turn needle and ball, and we're properly set up for all of our systems for departure before reporting the instrument checks are complete. Prior to the hold short, we're ensure that we knock out all of our takeoff checks. And then uh, once we're cleared to take the runway, we'll complete our hold short checks, ensuring the groove is clear, fuel control norm, the pitot heat is on, we'll turn our strobes on, squawk is norm, and our, ensure our taxi light is on at that point. Once we're lined up on the runway, the IP will hold the brakes and we'll run the power up to MRT, get a good control wipeout, and, next, and uh, confirm that we've got good engine instruments, good hides, good volts. Uh, no warnings and cautions, and at that point, uh, if the IP agrees, they'll come off the brakes and we'll report our expected line speed for today. Passing the uh, appropriate marker, we'll report whether we have good line speed, otherwise we'll report how slow we are at the gear, and it'll be the IP's determination whether we're going to take the jet flying at that point. For our expected departure today of 7 right, we'll be expecting a climb on runway heading to 1DME past the TACAM, then a right turn to 150, climbing up to 3,000, expecting that we can get higher in 10. On our initial check-in with departure, we'll request two blocks in the MOA, preferably blocks 1 alpha and 2 alpha. So the check-in for that would be departure rocket 1 1 single, passing 2,000 for 3,000, request 1 alpha, 2 alpha. Given the current weather outside, our total data is for temperature of 70 degrees, that gives us an idle N2% of 57%, with a line speed of 90 knots at the gear markers, a takeoff distance of 2.3, and a max abort of 140 knots. It gives us a landing distance of 3.6 dry and 5.0 wet. Any questions on the admin so far? No questions. Are right, planning on filing uh, the route, as mentioned before, we'll be heading up to the Pensacola South MOA, requesting 1 alpha, 2 alpha. Once we've been cleared into our blocks, we'll enter those into sequence 1. Coming out of the MOA, once we're cleared direct flight plan route, we'll plan on proceeding direct to Mobile for our approach. We're planning on requesting vectors for the ILS-33 to Mobile Regional. Once we're Cleared on vectors and uh, under ATC control, we'll plan on entering 111.5 into the VOR ILS box for the localizer, 
setting a course of 325 for the final approach course. We'll plan on uh, remaining at or above 1900 feet until intercepting the glide slope, at which point we'll begin our descent to our uh, decision altitude of 419 feet MSL or 200 feet AGL. Five miles prior to the final approach fix or the glide slope is when we'll begin to slow to configure, ensuring that we're configuring, configuring to gear down flaps full, boards out. If we go missed approach, we can expect to climb on runway heading to 700 and then a climbing left turn up to 2000, proceeding direct to the SEMS Vortac and holding as published. Coming out of Mobile, again, we'll expect to recover direct Jerry's TZ and then check in with Pensacola Approach we'll request uh, course rules. For the current weather, we'll expect course rules for runway 7. And once switched to tower, we'll check in with our current position relative to the field and uh, our current initial. For 7, we'll expect uh, point x-ray. So the check in for that would be tower rocket 11 single 10 miles west of the field proceeding to point x-ray request carrier with early descent. If we're approved for the carrier we know that once we're within five nautical miles of the field we're cleared to descend down to 800 feet for a left break at a downwind altitude of 600 feet assuming runway 7 left. If we're not cleared for the carrier we're cleared on a descent down to 1300 once we're within three miles for a pattern altitude of 1,000 feet, uh, planning to full stop out of the break. Any questions on admin? No questions, admin. All right, for contingencies and emergencies for today, if we have an aircraft fallout, we'll work at real time coordinating with the CEO and maintenance as able. And if maintenance has a spare jet, we'll jump to that one if available. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to complete today's event. For any ground emergencies, the most important thing will be to stop the aircraft and not go to any applicable bold face working as a team through that emergency. And then time permitting, we'll let base and ground know what our situation is prior to shutting the debt jet down and egressing as necessary. For an aborted takeoff below 100 knots, we'll board for anything we don't want to take flying. Above 100 knots, we'll be in that high speed regime, only boarding for those five warnings and three cautions. That's fire, GTS fire, EGT, RPM, high fail, oil press, or for a night or IMC, that generator warning and the ECA2 TV hot and canopy cautions. The call internally will be abort, 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 idle, boards, brakes. I'll be calling at boards and line speeds going down the runway, expecting if we're still fast to the three boards, so above 60 knots at that point, we'll have to drop the hook and take the long field gear if able. For runway departure, if it looks like we're gonna depart the runway at a high rate of speed, start to spin, or looks like we're gonna hit something, we'll assess whether we need to get out of the aircraft or shut it down. Keep in mind that if we are sticking with it, we'll ensure that we shut off the engine prior to departing the prepared surface so as to not fog the motor. If at any point when we're sticking with it, the jet begins to roll, we've bought the sticking with the jet at that point, we won't eject to, in order to avoid ejecting into the ground. For loss of directional control, if flyway airspeed is available, we'll execute a go around, and if not, we'll attempt to counter the swerve using rudder as able. For any system failures and emergencies for today, we'll use good CRM as a crew, knocking out the applicable wold face both in the front and back seat. And then time permitting, we'll break out the book, run through any notes, warnings, and cautions, confirm all bold face items have been completed, and then take that emergency to, lo to a logical conclusion, coordinating with ATC as able and necessary. For bird strike, if we suspect that the birds went down the intake, we'll immediately set up onto a PA profile to the nearest suitable field. Well, if we assess that it hit a control surface, we'll coordinate with ATC to get a block altitude above 10,000 feet and execute controllability checks in accordance with NATOPS. For midair, if we encounter another aircraft once we gain separation, we'll ask ourselves the two flip questions. Can the jet fly? Can we fly? If the answer to either of those questions is no, we won't hesitate to punch out. If the answer to both of those questions is yes, again, we'll get a block out to above 10,000 feet and execute controllability checks to determine our minimum controllable airspeed. For radio failure, we'll troubleshoot extensively all the way from our helmet down to our jet, checking all connections and trying all four radios in the cockpit. We can also try the last given frequencies, and if we determine that we're no kidding Nordo, we'll squawk 7600. And if VFR, we'll proceed, and we're in VMC, we'll proceed under VFR at that point. Otherwise, we'll proceed via Avenue Fame, as is expected of us under IFR control. For daytime VMC, we'll expect to come back home for the break, rocking our wings and looking for the green all to slant from tower to indicate we're cleared to land. Otherwise, we'll expect to proceed uh, under IFR. Nordo conditions. For ICS failure, if we lose ICS, we'll troubleshoot extensively. We can always talk to each other on a TAC frequency over AUX or over the base frequency. And if we're unable to do so, we can try and pass hand signals or hold notes up to the plexiglass in between the cockpits. 
And if that's uh, unable, we'll expect to recover back home with the IP taking all the comms as applicable. For loss of navigate's lost plane procedures, if we lose the ability to navigate as, as filed at any time throughout today's flight, we'll fess up to ATC. And if we're in VMC, we'll proceed under VFR from there. Otherwise, we'll get vectors as required. For inadvertent IMC, if it looks like we're going to penetrate any weather and go inadvertent IMC, we'll work with ATC to get back to some clear air. And if we're in landing environment and loose side of the ground, we'll make sure that we get a positive climb going up to the MSA and coordinate uh, an approach with ATC as able. If we're in the MOA and we experience any inadvertent IMC, we'll immediately turn around and try and get back to clear air before fessing up to ATC. For disorientation or vertigo, if either of us experiences any disorientation, we'll make sure to fess up to the other air crew. Try and get some straight and level time and get your head recaged. And if we're unable to, expect that we may have to knock it off and recover back home via straight in at that point. For our epoxy up today, it'll be know your own personal symptoms, as well as keeping the cabin altitude in your scan. If we're below 10,000 feet cabin altitude, we can always drop our mask and create the ambient cockpit air, as well as keep in mind that if the other air crew is completely incapacitated, you may need to direct them through their own adverse physiological symptoms checklist. For ejection scenarios today, if we have an engine failure below 1,500 feet and 180 knots, 180 knots or depart the jet below 10,000 feet, we'll immediately eject without delay. Well, if we're in a controlled ejection scenario, we'll coordinate with base and ATC as able, pointing the jet away from a, away from a populated area and running through that controlled ejection scenario checklist prior to punching out. The call for an ejection internally will be eject, 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 then erase the hand on that fourth count. Or if we lose ICS, we'll look for those three wraps on the canopy for eject, 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 Hand, hands to the handle on the fourth count, pulling on the fifth. Making sure that we've good, got good body position on the way up, good eye rock on the way down. Once we're on deck, we'll attempt to link up using 2828 on the radio or using our cell phones if able. For SAR on scene command, if we come across a downed aircraft or ATC vectors us to help, we'll set an overhead orbit at 2,500 feet, setting max E and determine a bingo field, fuel to the nearest suitable field. We'll remain on station knocking out that on-scene commander checklist until we reach that bingo fuel, have an emergency of our own, or are relieved by a more capable asset. For diverts and bingo fields for today, as mentioned, our primary divert is a VFR field divert over to Pensacola International. If we have any issues over at Mobile Regional, Mobile Downtown is also going to be our closest divert there. Our primary gear divert is just going to be coming straight back home with our backup gear divert being over at Gulfport to the west. Keeping in mind, it does take them 30 minutes to rig the gear there. Any questions on contingencies or emergencies? No questions. Safety-wise, I have a low for human factors, a low for the overall mission set. But we'll conduct a thorough brief uh, in order to make sure that we're all on the same page. So a overall low for today's mission and recommend we continue with today's flight. Any additions from the room on ORM? No additions. For safing and arming the ejection seat, we'll arm, safe and arm the seat in accordance with the takeoff checklist no later than taking the runway, and safing the seat in accordance with the post-landing checklist no earlier than departing the active runway using two-way concurrence from the air crew. For fog prevention, we'll ensure that all our pockets are zipped up, ensuring that whatever we take with us to the jet comes back, and if we realize we've dropped something, we'll fess up to the other air crew, try and get some straight and level time in order to retrieve it, and if we're unable to confirm that we got all that fod once we land, we'll report it to maintenance, that way that jet doesn't go flying again. Canopy movements will be conducted in accordance with NATOPS and SOP using two-way concurrence from the air crew. It'll be handled by you in the front seat, and I'll report clear prior to any canopy movements. For G-Lock, that'll be an automatic knock it off, and at that point, training is terminated, and we'll expect to recover back home via straight in, as well as keep in mind that the TTO DOR policies are in effect, and I have no questions. Knock it off will be called in situations of an emergency, for example, in the middle of a maneuvering uh, event, and that'll be an automatic roll wings level and assess the emergency and determine our next steps as appropriate for the scenario. Any questions on safety? No questions. All right, for today's question of the day, the emergency procedure is GTS fire on deck, on ground, it's emergency shutdown egress, in flight, that's engine switch off. The NATOPS question of the day, when does the slat caution light illuminate? That'll illuminate any time the slats are not in the commanded position, a split slat condition exists, or slats are selected above 217 knots, in which case the relay won't energize. This SOP question of the day, true, false, and RMM is required for all syllabus events in VMTS aircraft, that's true. And for the general knowledge, it's discuss whether required to maintain VFR in class Bravo airspace, required to have three miles visibility and clear of clouds. Any questions on the questions of the day? No questions. 
right, for TAC admin, prior to enter entering the working area, we'll make sure that we run through our pre-stall and arrow checks, ensuring that the bingo bug will have been set on deck to our MCF, leaving the area of a 1.6. <coughs> Once established in the area, we'll execute a G worm using a accelerating to 350 knots using a 4G pull for 90 degrees in one direction, then rolling wings level, unloading to accelerate to 400 knots, and at a point we'll uh, bring the nose back up to wings level and use a 6G pull, peaking at 6Gs and easing back to 4G pull for another 90 degrees of turn. Once directed by a Pensacola approach, we'll switch to button 18 and monitor the MOA common while we're working in the area, ensuring that we make a uh, ensuring that we maintain good awareness of our fuel state by conducting ops and g-checks after each maneuver. Once we're ready to exit the working area, we'll coordinate our exit with Pensacola Approach on button 5, plan on requesting flight plan route Mobile Regional. Exiting the area, we'll ensure that we reset the bingo bug to a joker fuel of 1.4 over at Mobile Regional. Any questions on TAC admin? No questions. For today's conduct, we plan on executing the squirrel cage and landing attitude stall in the working area. The squirrel cage will enter the maneuver at 380 knots, setting approximately 96% N2. We'll begin with a loop by using a 4G pull to intercept 17 units AOA. We maintain that pull all the way over the top until intercepting 4Gs on the way back down. At that point, we'll roll straight into the half Cuban by continuing that 4G pull to intercept a 17 unit pull up over the top ensuring that once we reach 45 degrees nose low, we'll stop nose movement, roll wings level, and then intercept that same 17 unit to 4G pull out through the bottom for a reverse and heading. From the half Cuban, we'll be immediately begin the Immelman by using that same 4G pull to intercept 17 units until the canopy bow touches the horizon when we're inverted, at which point we'll roll the aircraft upright and begin slowing to 180 knots to set up for the split S. Once we're at 180 knots, we'll pitch the nose 10 to 15 degrees nose up, pull the power back to idle, roll inverted, and use a smooth 17 unit pull to intercept 4Gs on the way back down, at exiting the maneuver on the reverse heading and 380 knots. During the maneuver, we'll make sure that we're keeping an eye on our airspeed on the way up and ensuring that we don't bust the top of the MOA, while on the way down, we'll maintain good deck awareness with deck calls all the way down, ensuring that we don't break the lower boundary of the MOA. For the landing attitude stall, we'll initially set up by slowing the configure below 200. At that point, once the student calls below 200, we'll configure to gear down, flaps half, boards out. And once we see three green, we'll initiate the landing checks by calling on ICS gear. A pilot will then run through all of his landing checks, which will be echoed by the student with their landing checks in the back seat and reporting the on speed. Once we're fully trimmed out, at 17 units, we'll initiate the maneuver by first pulling the power back to idle, maintain the velocity vector on the horizon. We'll continue to maintain altitude by sacrificing airspeed and pitching more and more nose up until we reach the first indications of a stall or 30 units AOA, at which point we'll recover from the maneuver by relaxing back stick pressure to 24 units of AOA, apply MRT, bring the speed brakes in in order to break the stall and establish a 24 unit climb away from the ground. With two positive rates of climb, we'll report the maneuvers complete. Any questions on conduct? No questions. Again, for today's mission, we'll be taking off out of Pens Navy Pensacola as a single to head up to the Pensacola South MOA, executing a squirrel cage and landing attitude stall, departing the MOA to proceed direct Mobile Regional to shoot the ILS 33, and then recovering back home via course rules. Any final questions? No questions.